Quite a few employment and wrongful termination cases involve a he said, she said type situation. This is the kind of case where the employee has one version of the events that led to his claim or to his termination and the employer has a completely opposite version of how the events occurred. There are no documents and there are no witnesses to support one side or the other and therefore the only thing that the lawyers, the judges and the jury have to go by is who to believe. Should they take the employee's word for what happened or should they believe the employer. Many if not most harassment cases involve a he said, she said situation because if the manager comes up to an employee and says or does something extremely offensive or discriminatory or harassing then there are going to be no witnesses around and the employee is going to complain about what happened and the manager is going to deny that anything like that ever happened. So the decision makers in the case are going to have to choose who to believe? Should they believe the victim, the alleged victim of the harassment, or should they believe the manager that nothing happened? In these types of cases, in these types of purely he said, she said situations, your credibility as a plaintiff, your ability to impress upon everyone else that you are more truthful and more precise in your testimony than the employer is even more important than in any other type of employment case. And your deposition is your best and your most important opportunity to impress upon the lawyer who represents the employer that you're very credible and you're more credible than their own client. You want that lawyer to go back to their client, to that corporation or to that state agency or whoever that employer is and tell them, look, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Nobody was there, but that employee sounds very believable. So how do you make sure that you come across as the most credible witness during your deposition? I have v three very simple but very effective tips for you. If you follow them, chances are that you'll come across as very credible and it will help settle your case or win your case at arbitration or trial. Tip number one. Remain emotionally even and stable at all times and never get angry during your deposition. No matter what kind of ridiculous or offensive question you're being asked during the deposition, never get angry. Angry people, people who raise their voice when they talk and when they try to prove something during the deposition, they do not sound more believable. If nothing else, when you get angry, the lawyer who is asking you questions is going to think that you're not all up there and he's going to assume that you're just making up stories. When you remain calm and quiet at all times, is that's the time when you come across as extremely believable. Number two, do not exaggerate and do not overreach. Do not, do not make your case better than it is. Do not make more out of the allegations than what really happened. Here are two examples from the recent cases that I handled. In one case, my client first mentioned to me that his boss told him to send his kids to school in India because my client was Indian and he found it very offensive. He comes to me and says, well, my boss told me that I have to send my kids to India because that's where they have to go to school and I thought it was discriminatory. Later, I found out that his boss simply asked him, are you going to send your kids to school in India? Because I heard that Indian schools are very good and the education in India is very advanced. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing offensive in that question. In fact, it sounds almost flattering. So needless to say, that hurt the credibility of my client. And it's an important lesson. When you say something that is not entirely true, you're almost bound to change your story and modify your story when you're asked the same question again. And experienced lawyers know that. They're going to ask you the same question again and again. And if you give a diff different answer, they're going to know that you're not telling the truth one of those times. When you tell exactly what happened, you're going to repeat the same exact story over and over because that's the truth. In another case, I was actually representing the employer and the gentleman that was fired was claiming age discrimination. 
So, the first time during his deposition, he said that his boss encouraged him to retire. He told him that it's time for him to go. The second time, when I asked him to quote that conversation, he told me that his boss was simply asking him whether he had any travel plans, whether there are specific places that he wanted to go to once he retires. And again, we were able to use this to show that the guy cannot keep his story straight. Once he, said this, he says his story this way, and the other time he says it a different way. So, the lesson for you is this. Keep the story straight. And if you don't remember exactly what happened, then say so. I don't remember exactly how things were said. Which leads me to the third point. If you don't remember something, it's perfectly fine to say, I don't remember, or I'm not sure. Here's a simple example. In another case where we represented an employer, I asked an employee, have you ever been written up? He said, no, I've never received a single write-up over the last 15 years that I worked for a company. Then I pull out a write-up from 10 years ago. Well, what about this? Well, it's been too long ago. Or, well, it was too petty and it was not fair and I didn't deserve it. My question wasn't about whether the employee deserved to receive that write-up. And it wasn't about when that write-up was issued. My question was very simple. Have you ever received the write-up? The answer that I received was no. That case didn't go to trial, it settled. But this is the kind of information that the lawyer will be able to use against you during trial and say, look, dear judge, dear jury, this employee did not tell the truth about something as simple as a write-up. How can you believe him about everything else that he's saying. And this argument is very powerful and it works more often than not. Therefore, it's very important that you don't exaggerate. I don't remember if I've been written up. Maybe I have been. Not sure. Or how many times did you have this conversation? How many times did you complain to HR about this discrimination or this harassment? I complained 12 times. I emailed them 12 times. Well, how come we only have three emails? Well, if you lied about that, maybe you're lying about everything else. It's much better if you're not sure how many emails you send to say, I'm not sure, but I think it's between two and five emails. But don't hold me to that. I'm not 100% sure. So keep these three tips in mind. Do not get emotional and angry during your deposition, no matter what. Do not make more out of your case. Do not make your case better than it is. Do not overreach. And do not make your story, the harassment, the discrimination story, more colorful than it really happened. And number three, if you don't remember something, if you're not sure of something, either say I don't remember or estimate to the best of your ability. Thank you.